You know, when I started making magical drinks, I never thought people would actually come to drink them. But hey, who am I to judge? Anyway, let's take a look at this one. Dumpster fire. Quite appealing, right? To know if I drink that. But the real question is, will you? <laughs> I also have this mystery box. Because at this point, who knows what you drink? Dumpster mm. fire. Dumpster fire sounds pretty cool. It does. So that would be oh, fun what's or char? Box. <laughs> the box. What's in the, the box? box? Box. More bees. The, the bargain. bargain. The mystery box. So bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Boner and juice. Boner and juice. <laughs> what do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? Or would you prefer the mystery box? What are you gonna take? You wanna hurt the bones? Or huh. you want the mystery? What is bone hurt and juice gonna- It sounds bad. Does it hurt your bones or does it hurt their bones? Oh. I don't know, but I mean the mystery box though. You could take the bone hurting juice and you can simulate the feeling of being crushed by Dahlia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I was totally testing your common sense. And you passed your prices, the drink you choose. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Bone hurting juice. No, not the bone hurting juice. Oh, shit. What have you done? Now all your bones will hurt. It's right in the bottle, you <laughs> dumb dumb. Put it on my tab. Uh, oh. I barely affected you. What do you mean? I'm below tens. Dude. I'm all below 10 success. Oh wait, it just reduced everything by one, okay. Ah, the bargain! Thanks for this weird thanks for this weird potion I prepared. Now you receive everything at a discount! But I don't pay for anything. Not sure if that's a good or bad thing, really. Let's do this. What do your drinks do? Still hard to believe know. you drank that. Good luck, I guess. I got bees, and now things cost less, even though money's not a thing. Maybe that's what the heart is. Or is the heart where you sit with someone? Oh, everybody Maybe. choose a movie. Say her choice out loud while- What? Movie. Oh. Uh... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Movie, 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 movie. Uh, Kingsman! Uh... Uh... Eight Crazy Nights. Which movie would be the hardest to reenact as a fireside play at a summer camp? Uh, well, what is an animation? <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Eight Crazy Nights. Is that an Adam animation? Movie. What? Yeah, it's an Adam Sandler movie that's animated. I think it's the only one that's animated. What? Yeah. I didn't know he made an animated movie. Eight Crazy Nights? Yeah, it's a, I thought... I, I, I grew up watching the shit out of that movie. Did that just get, like, a live-action version? No. Never. With- with what's-his-name Rogan? What? What? Maybe his name isn't Rogan. Sagan? No! What? Alright, let's get to the point here. It's- uh, you. you can't reenact anime <laughs> again. <laughs> I was gonna- if I didn't choose an animation, <laughs> you definitely would've won. Cause Kingsman was a wild ass. It was. When you get um, back, we do in Baho. <laughs> maybe I should just. Maybe I should go up something else. <laughs> maybe I'll go do um. The charm. Some, I was Let's gonna say focus. that. No, maybe I'll Let's go charm. do creativity. Creativity is bottom left. Whoa! We're gonna head into the, to the cabin here. That day, there's a, a guest speaker at the Monster Scouts HQ. She's a were eagle. Oh, it's a were eagle. Monster Scout, here to tell you all about advancing through the levels. Her speech is surprisingly interesting. She started out at Camp Spooky just like you and worked super hard to earn every single badge. She also paints at some possible foul play, including her murdering a higher level scout and wearing her skin as a disguise in order to advance through the ranks. Sure is inspiring. You're too busy flirting with your friends to dedicate that kind of time to Monster Scout. <laughs> you get everything on set! Oh my god. Oh, I'm so pissed. 
that's ridiculous. That couldn't have there's, been worse. There's gonna be checks that are gonna be like, <laughs> you ate creativity. <laughs> Back at your tent, you spot Calculus and fiddling with his ant farm. He's so tender with those small leggy boys. <laughs> leggy oh, boys. hello, friend Nicholas Cage. I was just deriving useful insights about organic life from my ant terrarium. Initially, I was worried that my tiny six-legged creatures might not be fit a fitting analog for more complex life forms, but friend Milo helpfully informed me that we are all tiny six-legged creatures where it counts. Concern averted. Lately, I have been focused on giving my little ants the happiest little or happiest lives possible. If I can just optimize their tiny ant lives, it will help me understand how to make a l my larger friends happier as well. Recently, however, I have run into an obstacle. As everyone knows, the happiness of an organic being is directly related to how efficient it is at working. And my ants are quite efficient. I hardly know any humans who could want or vomit. <laughs> so much material into the mouth of their exalted queen. <laughs> but I wonder, are my ants as efficient as they could be? Strap gun Surely, <laughs> there must be more room for improvement. But I have tried everything I can think of without success. Transmitting a mathematical formula for organizational efficiency didn't help, and neither did telling them to do their best in binary. I am at a loss. While well, calculus has set the bar pretty low in terms of workable <laughs> solutions, surely you could think of something that will make these ants do to harder workers. <laughs> a yearly company of Shreve to Miami, the anticipation alone will fill them with determination. Hey, that's Undertale, I think. Is the it? fantasy oh, of yeah. meritocracy. Meritocracy. That's a um, big word. Uh... I don't know what's what. Fun? This one's fun. Probably fun. Or creative. <laughs> it's gotta be fun. Probably fun. Because that's, uh, that's that's a fun trip. Alright. And... Big word. It's, maybe it's so big that it's smart? That's what I think. I don't think we could judge it just off of that. I mean, if you want to. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, but what if that's it? I'm so smart. Yeah, go for it then. If that's quick, if you think... mm -hmm. hold on. Hey Google, meritocracy. It's like rewards, right? Meritocracy is a political system in which economic goods and put and or political power are vested in individual people on the basis of talent, effort, and achievement. <laughs> oh, big word. Smart. That sounds smart. It's a lot of shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, is that charming? <laughs> what is meritocracy? That's simple. You explain it's the idea that the most talented and hardworking people rise to the top of society because they deserve to be there. That is such a nice idea. It will certainly motivate the ants to work hard and improve themselves. But how will we teach it to them? The same way the corporate elite has taught it to everyone in the world. <laughs> Through ceaseless propaganda. Interesting. I have heard it said that propaganda is usually bad but you are my friend and i would never do a bad thing so oh and would never do a bad thing so i will assist as best i can i'm gonna cry if his ants die great you ask him to print out 100 <laughs> tiny posters that read work hard and save diligently and you too could be the queen someday <laughs> hold on that doesn't seem right isn't the queen's position determined by certain genetic markers present at her birth right right Let's revise that. What about, uh, the queen was born with the genetic markers that make her <laughs> queen because she worked harder than you. I don't know, Nicolas Cage. Equating wor hard work with genetic predispositions oh, no. <laughs> seems like a slippery slope. Hmm. Seems like you're not getting your point across. One more try. Uh, stop whining. Income equality isn't real and neither is <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. That is awful. <laughs> Friend Nicholas Cage, I am beginning to think you are using this as an opportunity to indoctrinate these impressionable ants with retrograde ideas. Damn, foiled again. Why won't anyone let you indoctrinate their insects with your <laughs> retrograde ideas? I'm afraid I can't allow you 
or allow my aunts to be exposed to your deleterious influence any longer, Nicolas Cage. If you will excuse me, I am going to take my aunts to a lecture uh, on political economy and then take the robotic equivalent of a long shower. My disgust circuits are overloaded. Oh. Damn, why do you have to do such a bad... <laughs> That sucks! Oh my god. Go. Why? Why can't we pick right? I'm so bad at this. Boldness. Get it up there, pal. <laughs> that day, you venture into the hunt. Why do I have a fire and a flashlight? Everything is going fine, and you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost versus someone wearing a blanket with two holes, it's so hard to tell the difference. Oh no. Appears and whispers in your ear. Remember. What? Aaron, do you want to say this bit? Because this is you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for background, Jeremy and I played a bit of Monster Prom, the first one. And uh, I had bought a, a sheet with two holes cut out of it, and everyone believed that I was a ghost except one of the characters. It, it was pretty funny. <clears throat> Uh, wait, this is me talking? Yeah. Remember one day, you will be long gone, and no one will remember you. All the struggle you endure to become a better version of yourself, both personally and professionally, will eventually mean nothing. The ghost leaves while you take that all in, getting two boldness in the pro- What I get three? Is 15 the max? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I think so, yeah. <clears throat> Later, you find Dahlia punching a rock. Or headbutting one. This would normally be pretty standard, but you realize her expression has a state of sadness. You go to ask if she's okay. She's not. Aww. Oh, hi, Biddles. You must be wondering why I, Dahlia Aquino, am not my usual cheerful disposition. And I know you all expect me to keep my morale high, as I am the unquestionable leader of this camp army of ours. <laughs> you literally have never seen her as that, but you're about to- but you're not about to interrupt her. <laughs> you see, I've been lately enjoying the many pleasures of summer, as I get closer to my goal of having the best summer ever. But might all these pleasures be making me weak in the process? I've been so focused on summer, when before my only re season used to be the conquest season. I think we all know what the problem is. It's Damien. Yeah, my whole thing used to be used to be being Damien's rival, conquering the eighth circle of hell and all that. But summer camp has opened my eyes. Damien is like super lame. That's right. That idiot has zero survival skills. I saw him checking a tree's bark to find the nearest McDonald's. He's the silverest of the silver spoons. It's disheartening. I cannot see that wimp as a rival anymore, but a healthy rivalry is an essential part of a warlord's structure to remain strong. I know this because I've watched all kinds of informational documentaries on being strong, such as Dragon Ball and Naruto. I think one of those was even filmed by M Michael Moore. <laughs> So I got worried that I would become weak by having no rival. I started punching this rock in the hopes that we'd become sworn enemies. It's not working. You tell Dahlia that you've be that you'll become her rival. A rival to to remember. Nah. You're just saying that so we can build some sort of sexual tension. I don't blame you. Anyone would leave with the chance of it if it meant they'd get a spoonful of this buff, beautiful bye. But enemies to lovers sounds more like, more like an Aravi uh, or a Joy thing. Not my jam, though. Sorry. No, take it. That sucks. But if Dahlia's not into sexual tension with rivals, maybe she's into intimacy, trust, and eventually sexual tension with good friends who help her in her hour of need. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just jump headfirst into it. Punch the first person who crosses your path and let the rivalry blossom over time. You've surpassed Damien's level by far. But what if you had a rival that was a horrible creature made out of 14 Damien's? That may level the playing field. Uh, anything that isn't smart, you're probably good. 
my smarts too. Don't don't overthink it. So I don't actually I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's up to you, Mr. Biddles. Mr. This Biddles. definitely isn't smart. What? Smart. Oh, Aaron, I'm gonna yep. lose so much. Only mm. four or something. Okay, I'm intrigued. Damien turned out to be a sad little wimp. But maybe 14 Damien's together will add up to something worthy of my time. The math checks out. Does it though? Anyway, to roll up your sleeves or recite a black magic spell you may or may not have created in a, on a... You may have not created a rainy Saturday months ago during your being obsessed with Damien face. <laughs> Halfway through chanting, you realize you never actually perfected the harem of Damien spell since that evening you got distracted and derailed into voraciously writing Paul Plart's smut. Oh no. To this day, your equal parts ashamed and proud of the result. Par part three, Malkak. <laughs> but what can go wrong? God. Huh? Oh, you, you're Damien, you take it. Whoa, he's a, a horrible mess. But I guess Damien is that too, so it tracks. <laughs> hey you, Massa Damien's, wanna fight? I am not a spicy red baby. <laughs> Man. As impossible as it sounds, I think this thing they might be 14 times the wimp Damien was. I am a spicy red adult. <laughs> sure, lame ass massive Damien, <laughs> sure you are. Anyway, Biddles, I think this was a terrible idea. You probably are dumb for having terrible ideas. I'm gonna leave you with your weird thirsty creation. I have some Paul Blart smut to read, bye. <laughs> No, if you could only tell Dahlia that that Paul Blart smut is also a rather thirsty creation of yours. Nice. But alas, you must respect the sacred vow of secrecy. The secrecy of the holy siblinghood of Paul Blart smut writers. For that is your duty as a Paul Blart smut writer. <laughs> okay, that's not true. I just like saying Paul Blart smut out loud. Paul Blart smut. <laughs> Funny. In any case, use for charm and too far. Uh, yeah, yeah. You might need the fun on, I'm sure. Who knows? I need the charm oh, back. But... <laughs> oh no. More food. Uh, Egg. Steak. Play your side. How likely you would be to eat the food in a survival scenario with the cavit. Ca caveat. Caveat? Caveat? With yeah. the caveat? Oh. Um, super bad steak or super bad egg? Uh, I the steak would be better. You think? Well, is an expired egg just a hatched animal? But what if it was cooked? Uh, well, it's expired. It expires before you use it. You're right, it's an animal. <laughs> Wait, which means it's a chicken and I can kill it and cook it. Exactly. Well, you've turned you've turned the answer to me. <laughs> well, I mean, yours was the better answer. I'm glad. I appreciate your honesty. 